Hi, I'm Judy Ryder. Welcome to Cheap Joe's Test Studio. And today I'm gonna to paint uh, a white picket fence with a birdhouse and a little blue bird uh, on, on one of the posts. Now the fun thing about this particular painting that I'm going to do is that um, it was based on a photograph I took actually up here in Boone in front of uh, Daniel Boone Inn. And uh, unfortunately, the day that I took the pictures, there wasn't um, a real bright direct light source, so I didn't have a lot of shadows. But it was a great uh, photograph for the shapes of the pickets. And also, I loved the way the flowers and the stems and everything sort of weaved uh, through the fence and just created the really neat picture. Now, in this picture, there's actually a bird, a bigger birdhouse, but I simplified it just uh, because um, I just didn't want to have to draw all that. And actually, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll combine pictures, or I'll just take a section of a picture, uh, you know, the close-up, like that. And uh, I happened to be uh, golfing one day, and uh, our golf course has bluebird houses, so I took some pictures of bluebird houses in, in different ways, and so I'm actually going to use that. And then, I was fortunate enough also, one uh, day I was looking out my um, back, uh, back window and I saw a bluebird on my deck. So uh, it took me several tries, but I quickly got, and it's, uh, this may be different bluebirds, but I quickly got some different views. It was almost like he was uh, posing for me in different positions. So anyway, I use this as kind of as a reference to add the bluebird up here on the fence. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, because I don't want to make it a pure, pure white fence, but I want to save some whites. So I used uh, the masking fluid on some of the fence, the sides of the fence posts that I wanted to keep white. And actually, uh, you know, some of the detail down in here. And I did this just to leave some little whites for me to probably paint out later, but I just wanted to add a little sparkle. But the first thing I want to do really is to put a, uh, just an overall underpainting. I'm going to mist this with just water because I am going to work rather wet in this, but I just want to kind of get a good start on that. And I don't, uh, you know, put just tons of water on here, but I do want it to be sort of nice and soft when I put these colors on to make a nice underpainting. Now, the one thing I forgot to do was put masking fluid on the bluebird, so hopefully I can leave those a little lighter and I'll be able to uh, come and paint around those, paint those in later. I can always blot them with a the tissue. Okay, so I'm gonna let that water soak in just a little bit. I'm going to put out some paint. Now I'm going to just use some primary colors. I'm going to put out a, a cobalt, a nice blue. This is for the underpainting. Uh, I'll glaze other colors and uh, on top of them. I want to make sure I have plenty of paint out. And actually that has a lot of paint in that brush, so I don't want to waste that. I'm just going to leave that brush right there and go to a different brush to put out my yellow. And I'm going to use some Aurelian and also just a little touch of raw sienna. And I might add some new gamboge later, but that's what I'm going to start with. Now, uh, I need to also put out some um, red and I'm going to use uh, rose matter or permanent rose, some sort of a light pinky red. Okay. And I'll just leave that paint in that brush. Okay, so my paper, I think the water has um, saturated it. Um, most of the time, I actually, I do tape my paper down. I'm going to try to do this very quickly, and uh, hopefully it won't matter. But I'm thinking about my sunlight coming this way, so I want to sort of sweep my paint this way, and I'm going to start with the blue. 
and let's just woo that is really rich so we're really going to have to uh, dilute that down a little bit but that should not be a problem and I don't really worry too much about um, my fence because it's going to have some shadows on it anyway and I've saved my whites so I can intermingle this um, and not really worry too much about it. I can always lift it if I need to. Um, let's go ahead and put a little purple in there. As we come across, let's put some uh, yellow here and there. Uh, it's impossible to do these things exactly the same way every time, but this underpainting, you should be able to, um, because you're not going to have it really dark, you should be able to, to do um, just some very random washes on here, and it'll, it'll all come out in the wash, so to speak. I've saved my whites, so I don't really have to worry about the pure whites that I want. So I can be a little bolder here and there. These will be flowers intermingled here and there. And then let's do the ground down here. Some nice shadow color, ground color, and then some shadow color. Go ahead and put that on there just to anchor it. I know this is where some of those greens are going to be anyway, so. Now, I know that looks rather dark, but the thing we know about watercolor is that often it dries lighter. So when this dries, it will be much lighter than it is now. And I don't worry too much about um, if my brush strokes don't seem to be what I intended uh, at this point because I, you can always, um, when you come back in with different layers later, you can change it, but just kind of getting a light source and uh, a nice variety of these warm colors here and there. Okay, now I have to let that dry so um, I do have another one that we can work on to give you some idea of how to, um, what to do with this when it is dry. Hang on a minute, I'll set this aside and we'll get the second one, we'll get started on the second one.